Hello everybody, Gibbs and Matic here, and today I'm going to talk about microtransactions in GTA Online and whether they have halted the development of other Rockstar projects and other Rockstar games. So this all sort of stems from a post on the Grand Theft Auto 5 subreddit. About three weeks ago, there was this post on there, and I'll have a link in the description to it if you want to go check it out. And it was a post of a picture of games that Rockstar had created from 2008 to 2017 and it was titled microtransactions are a disease and it was titled microtransactions are a disease and I want to talk about this picture because I feel like uh, it does kind of spark a good discussion but it's also uh, at times a little bit disingenuous and I want to talk about that in this video so first off let's look at the image itself so you could see here uh, it goes from 2008 to 2017 and these are games that Rockstar have uh, created or published and as you can see in 2008 there was Grand Theft Auto 4 and Midnight Club in 2009 there was Grand Theft Auto Chinatown Wars and Beater Raider 2010 there was Red Dead Redemption 2011 there was LA Noir in 2012 there was Max Payne 3 and finally there was Grand Theft Auto 5 in 2013 However, it goes on for four extra years where it just says nothing besides 2017 where it says nothing with a question mark. Uh, so that kind of makes me wonder if this image, uh, even though it was posted three weeks ago, if it was created before 2017. Because as I'm sure most of you are aware, there is actually a Rockstar game coming out in 2017 or at least uh, it's projected to come out in 2017. Who knows if it'll get delayed. And that is Red Dead Redemption 2. And that was announced back in October of 2016. So we already know that there is a game going to be coming out in 2017. But I do feel like there are a few things about this post that are a bit disingenuous. Which uh, first off was the fact that this seemed to have been created before 2017. Or he just didn't know about Red Dead Redemption 2. I'm not sure if the poster of this created the image or not so uh, who knows I, I don't know if he just found it or if he you know actually created it himself but a few other things about this image is one in 2009 I don't know if you could count those two games on the same level as other games on this list uh, you have Chinatown Wars which was a game for the Nintendo DS and then Beta Raider which uh, I didn't even really know much about. Apparently it's some like uh, music creation game and it was on iOS and the PS3. So I don't know if you could count 2009 because uh, while they are Rockstar games technically, they are essentially mobile games uh, and you know smaller games than something like Grand Theft Auto 4 or Grand Theft Auto 5 or even Red Dead Redemption or Max Payne 3. Another thing is that in 2011, LA Noir was released. However, that is not a Rockstar developed game. Uh, all the other games on this list uh, were Rockstar developed, or at least in mostly Rockstar developed, and they had a certain studio working on it. However, LA Noir was developed by an Australian studio called Team Bondi, or Team Bondi, I'm not entirely sure how to say it, but they were the people that actually created that game. And then Rockstar published it. However, it was not a Rockstar created game. And even then, after the game was released, uh, the studio that created it, Team Bondi, actually shut down. So they're no longer around. However, I do want to talk about the fact that ever since 2008, we have been seeing at least a, one Rockstar game each year until 2013. And then in 2014, 2015, and 16, we don't have any Rockstar games unless you count... Uh, the Grand Theft Auto 5 uh, re-releases, uh, so, you know, it coming out on the PS4 and Xbox One, and then in 2015 on the PC. I guess you could count those. And also, they have released mobile versions and uh, sort of uh, slight remasters. Like, I know in 2014, they released a GTA San Andreas on the Xbox 360, and they've also released some updated versions on uh, the PlayStation 4 with uh, PS Now, I believe it's called. And, they, and then also they've released Bullies, GTA San Andreas, uh, and some other Rockstar games on to mobile platforms, which is uh, one thing that I guess you could count as well as being sort of new games, but also at the same time they're just remasters, so I don't know if you'd really count those. However, I feel like there's a few reasons for this, and I feel like just blaming it on microtransactions and shark cards 
is honestly just kind of the easy way to you know blame Rockstar. But I feel like there may be other reasons. And I want to talk about that in this video. And first off is that games cost more to create now. Uh, you look at Grand Theft Auto V, which I believe had a budget of about $250 million. Uh, compare that to GTA 4, which I'm not sure of the exact budget about it, but it wasn't even close to how much money Grand Theft Auto V cost. And sure, you know, GTA 5 has made way more money than GTA 4, not only from sales, but also shark cards and online microtransactions. And especially because, I guess you could blame it on microtransactions, because now they have a steady income, and they probably don't have to spend as much money on GTA Online DLCs as they did with GTA 4 and GTA 4's expansions. And they're probably still making more money than just from microtransactions than GTA 4's expansions made uh, and I'm sure you know a year's worth of GTA Online updates is probably just about the same if not a little bit less than the expansions for GTA 4 and they still make more money and it's actually good for Rockstar because they can take more time on games now whereas before they had to uh, to make a constant revenue stream they would have to release a game every year, or even in some cases two games a year, just to make, you know, money that year. And as well, since Take-Two Interactive is a public company, and they have investors and shareholders, they definitely want to be making money each and every quarter, and they can do that with GTA Online because it's making a constant revenue stream and is far less risky than something like creating an entire new a game that could cost tens of millions of dollars, maybe even hundreds of millions of dollars to create and advertise and market. And if it fails, you've wasted a lot of money. Whereas GTA Online microtransactions, you don't have that risk involved as much. Another thing is that games are just now bigger. You look at uh, GTA 4, you look at something like San Andreas, which came out in 2005 to GTA 4, that was only three years of development. Now, maybe they were uh, conceptualizing and uh, you know, working a little bit on GTA 4 before San Andreas came out. Sure, maybe they did. However, still, that was three years. And then you compare that to GTA 4, which is 2008, to GTA 5, which is 2013. That's five years of development. So games are not only costing more nowadays because there's more in them, but they're also taking a lot longer to create. And I'm sure GTA 5 had more people working on it than GTA 4 did as well. And I'm sure most people would agree that GTA 5 is a bigger game than GTA 4. Now, whether you say that it's a better game, that's irrelevant because that's pretty much subjective. However, I think we can all agree that GTA 5 is still a bigger game than GTA 4, which took longer to create, costed more money, and had more people working on it and then you also look at red dead redemption to red dead redemption 2 today is the seventh anniversary of red dead redemption so 2017 uh you know, will be seven and a half years from red dead redemption till red dead redemption 2 whenever it comes out in this fall or you know even longer if it gets delayed so that's a long time to be working on a game Sure, maybe, you know, uh, Rockstar San Diego, who are most likely people working on this game, uh, maybe they've been working on other projects, and maybe it hasn't been a full-force team, uh, and they're definitely a smaller studio than Rockstar North, who were the people that were working on Grand Theft Auto V, so, of course, it'll take longer. However, still, seven years of development, and if the game fails, that's a big loss for Rockstar, Whereas with microtransactions, they can still make their money without much of a risk. So, are microtransactions a bad thing for GTA and Rockstar games in the future? Not necessarily. And this is coming from somebody who hasn't bought a shark card in GTA. And personally, I like having free DLCs. Um, you know, other people that do buy shark cards essentially buy it for everyone. And I will say that is quite a nice thing. Are microtransactions the reason why we haven't seen a Rockstar game in the past three years? I don't know. I don't think so because there are other reasons and you know, game development is changing every single year pretty much. And uh, there are other reasons why that's the case. And I feel like just this post was a little bit disingenuous. And by the way, this isn't a video to hate 
on whoever posted this. And this isn't a video to hate on that person or to say that they're wrong. However, I still wanted to talk about it because I feel like it does spark a good discussion and I wanted to give my two cents on the topic. Do you like microtransactions in GTA? Do you think it's a good thing or do you think that they have ruined Rockstar Games entirely and that that's the reason why we haven't seen a new Rockstar game in the past couple years? Whereas before we were getting like one every year, but now it's been a while since Grand Theft Auto 5. Leave me your thoughts in the comments. Hope you enjoy. Feedback so much. I'll see you guys in the next video.